you're on mute, uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's our famous dialogue for the year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Our side, of course, uh, Thompson is joined. Uh, we have uh, Sudhir Shetty from um, Ad Factor. Harish is just yeah. going to join. And yeah. uh, I think that's it. And Rinal is also going to join. But we can start our discussion. It doesn't really yeah. matter. They, right. Right. Uh, so, uh, uh, do you guys have something you would like to present before we start uh, having our? We have a few set of questions for the man, for the team in general. So I think we can wait for everyone to join. But we'd like to hear from you first. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so what we'll do is, you know, anyway, our uh, formal investor mm -hmm. pact is getting ready, and that's why we have Sudhir Shetty sure. there. So very shortly, right. you will see our you right. know, formal deck available, and we will, uh, you know, make right. it available for all you guys. You know, so. Right. But meanwhile, what I'll do is maybe spend two, three minutes on trying to set the context in terms of this new 3i, right? You know? Right. So, uh, see, post the carve out, you know, if you look mm -hmm. at it, uh, now the new 3i is, uh, we are, uh, after the carve out of the products business, you know, now we mm -hmm. are in cusp of change. The way I look at it, it's a great opportunity for this company to kind of chalk out a new course. That's the way we are. And uh, right. at a start point, the new 3i, we are, probably, uh, you know, redefining this 3i itself. You know, 3i has been this ICICI for a very long time, you know, almost 27 years, mm -hmm. the 3i stand for ICICI. So the new 3i, we are defining it as innovate, incubate and invent. So that's the mantra in which we are going forward very clearly as an organization, right? Okay. Uh, so just to expand on this uh, strategy, innovate is also we are now building our new vision mission statement as well. The vision also is that we want to be a, a one stop shop uh, mm -hmm. and an end to end service provider. The biggest shift we are trying to do is more aligned towards business outcomes and aligning to our customers KPIs and business metrics where digital and technology is part of it actually. So that's a huge shift if you ask me. So as a new 3i we want to bring in a convergence of technology domain expertise and industry orientation. So that's a key shift from a classic IT services company, uh, you know, which is uh, traditional, you, you have a time and uh, you know dozen. Even I work for a few of them as well. You know, so we're trying to kind of do it very differently. That's one. So innovation is about how quickly can we orchestrate, uh, you know, uh, customer-oriented, industry-oriented services and solutions very quickly, and we monetize and add value to our customers. That is innovate very quickly. Incubate is more or so, if you ask me, is accelerate, uh, but we are using the word incubate just to keep it, you know, the three I's. Where we want to work with the uh, venture capitalists who are already invested in startups. We don't want to waste our money on startups. Let's be very clear about it, okay? There are guys who already invested their money in startups, okay? They have an ecosystem. Our role is very clearly to provide enterprise-grade architecture, enterprise-grade standards, help them to scale up or commercialize. And we also build center of excellences around them, actually, right, around them. And we give them global access. So our investments would be in practice building, industry orientation, making them enterprise grade. The most important thing is giving them global access to customers. That's our role. We are very clear, actually. Now, after some time, it's a mutual win-win for both parties where we have created revenue value for both of us, we might decide to take stakes in it. We'll have a first right in those companies where we are doing a white labeling. And uh, the invent and the incubate work together because they are in various stages of, uh, how do I say, a maturity. Our focus areas would be in future ready softwares and technology. So that, you know, we are very clearly focused on few areas. We don't want to go boil the ocean. We want to be a super specialized organization. A, we want to focus on 5G powered services. Anything to do with 5G, 5G powered cognitive services is a very clear focused area. We are bringing in best in class. In fact, our press release will come out of the new team we are bringing on board as well. You know, real top notch professionals are brought in to build these practices. Uh, and so the 5G and the telecom media entertainment will go together because it's a kind of a convergence. And uh, one is build the telecom media entertainment vertical itself. The next generation one, where we are looking at SD WAN, you know, all this good stuff in terms of SASE and edge computing, work with the telcos as partners and also work with telcos customers also. Because see, telcos are struggling. You know, globally, all these guys have been selling. I've been a telco guy myself. 
I don't think people have really thought through it beyond postpaid and prepaid. I think now the only good thing is Jio has kind of set the stage, at least from an Indian context perspective. Maybe we want to work with other telcos to bring the ecosystem to them, bring more service lines, take them to market. A very clear focus area. So going beyond BFSI, we want to kind of build on the BFSI experience we have, right, and kind of expand, invest in telecom media entertainment using the uh, technology incubation we are talking about and build other services and products around it. That's a very clear strategy. Second, we also want to focus on, uh, we also got a head start in our cloud practice, right? The way we are kind of building our cloud. But now as a kind of a late start, we want to kind of see how to make our clouds edge ready, which is future ready. Everybody's got a cloud today. You know? So how can we be different? We want to be an edge ready. All our cloud will be edge ready. And we're also working with some very niche technologies by which we can re reduce the cost of cloud by almost like 20%. So we are working on that as well. So cloud, which is more optimized in terms of virtualization and edge ready. And once it's edge ready, it's also SaaS secure at the edge. You look at today, the biggest single biggest problem is security. You work mm -hmm. from home, all of us are working from home. It's, it's, it's fantastic, it's all flat, but also increases the security factor of it actually. So how do you secure at the edge of the network will be a clear focus area. So cloud, yes. which is edge ready, then also building on our typical infrastructure management services practices where we want to invest in micro data centers, because that's the way forward, where we want to mm -hmm. work on micro data centers. So if you look at it, we are joining the dots, uh, Siddharth. You got the cloud, which yes. is edge ready. We got the micro data centers, take it to the edge, right? So we also invest in edge computing, the 5G powered mm -hmm. services around it, right? And yeah. then yeah. the cognitive services where we want to take analytics to the edge. So we, this is my invent or the future building stuff. You know, if I break it into three parts, run, grow, build, run, we run our current business, which we inherited more efficiently, grow, we aggressively mm -hmm. grow with innovation, very smart solutions and services. Build as we build yeah. for the future. We want to be future ready because that is going to keep us probably stay ahead of the curve. That's very clearly. Yeah. On the engagement and commercial model, Siddharth, so we want to be a disruptor. Fundamentally, what we want to do, we want to do exactly opposite of a competition. Exactly opposition. So we want to do absolutely TCO-based deals, which are going to be disruption using digital mm -hmm. and technology. Because see, look mm -hmm. at it this way. Most of the top-notch players also, it's not that they're not aware of whatever I'm talking about. Everybody's aware of that. It's a question of, do I go cannibalize my revenue or not? And mm -hmm. when do I cannibalize my revenue? Or you allow somebody else to come and cannibalize the revenue. Mm. From where we are, starting as new 3i, I've got nothing to lose. I'll just go cannibalize other people's revenue. I'm very clear on that, actually. Right? Mm. So that's where we are. You know, so broadly, see, that's the kind of you know, uh, you know, direction where we are moving. And right. that's where we want to invest our time and energy also. So kind of how do we more efficiently run our current run business, get some more margin extraction out of it, make it more profitable. Right. And the single right. biggest thing is whatever we preach, we want to practice, right? right? right. Yeah. Right. So that's the kind of a okay. broad, uh, you know, if you ask me, then you can ask me some questions and maybe I can take it, you know, from there. Right. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, that was quite an introduction. And uh, very frankly, it is what's got us excited about 3i. Like that was, uh, we had the opportunity to see your press release and your roadmap. Uh, but as you mentioned yourself, right, like it's what you're talking about is something that your competition already knows and is also pursuing. It's not that no one else is in pursuing the exactly same things. So uh, some of our questions are going to just revolve around those particular areas. Uh, but first I would get to uh, something that uh, the first thing that I wanted to ask you was, was the deal with a the Apex partners, did that include a non-compete? Like does this prevent the new 3i from actually entering the products business again? like based or like designing similar this thing, or is the new 3i strictly going to so function only as a services only company? No, no, see, like any, uh, you know, Siddharth, so look at it, any car out business, it's logical that what I sell to right. a party, obviously I can't produce the same thing. As right. Start, right? Right. right, right. So the right. non-compete is limited to that. Okay. Non-compete, of course it is, non-compete is there because obviously we cannot produce the same mm. product which we right. sold, right? Absolutely. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. but beyond that, we are going to build products very clearly. I told you that's the reason why we are investing in right. telecom media entertainment and we right. are building center of innovation, center of excellences and the right. entire incubator strategies around that. 
where right. we take existing products, we build other products on top of it or services on top of it. But fundamentally, we will build IP. So that's simple, as simple as that. So we are okay. not going to be a just a, you know, a services company. Let's let's see. See, everything is going to be digital inside. It's going to be technology inside. It's going to be products. Right. It, right. Ultimately, how con our clients consume could be as services. Right. The world is anyway moving towards anything as a service, right? You know, so... <laughs> Your point, uh, the focus would be on IP generation, very clearly. Okay. Okay. So from what I understand uh, and from what I can infer, because the carved out business generally dealt with the BFSI and the insured uh, sector, so your products largely won't be sim catering to those, but you'll be working on those newer areas that you've mentioned. Yeah, so to uh, your point very clearly, so to avoid all these conflicts and other stuff, we will stay away from building products in BFSI. Okay. Right. Definitely, we will see services are bread and butter, okay, in BFSI. We will continue to do services. We will have collaborations. We will have alliances and stuff like that where we will work on it for sure. Right. But right. our new products, what we want to invest, we want to invest in horizontal sectors and in industries like telecom media entertainment. Say, for example, I'll give you an example. We are working on creating a global risk and compliance product ourselves. Okay. Okay. Right, which was not uh, part of the car world. So it's there with the current 3i itself. In fact, we have a, a Swiss-based company uh, with whom we are working together. It's co-owned by both of us. And okay. the global risk and compliance will be a core offering by 3i. So it's a product right. and platform we're developing together. Right. And we want to invest in it. In fact, part of our roadmap, we are also negotiating with various governments across the world. We've got nothing to lose. Whoever gives us right. the best bet, we will put up a center of innovation in that country. So right. as we're speaking to you, I'm, uh, we are negotiating with Malaysia, Switzerland, Republic of Ireland, Montreal. So right. two out of four, we will put a center of innovation. Right. And of course, India is definitely there. We are investing in India for sure anyway. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, th thank you, Thompson. But that brings me to page nine of your strategic roadmap. And uh, it talks about uh, just if I could particularly uh, get to it by right yeah it talks about protecting revenues dependent on Azentio led accounts so uh, like so is there some sort of a tacit agreement between you and Azentio to continue having a working relationship like is there a future there like is that a stream of revenue that we're looking at no absolutely absolutely see look at it this way see for example part of the agreement itself See, some mm -hmm. contracts which were led by the current uh, mm -hmm. products or the product divisions, which is now right. SSL, right? So if you look at right. it, there were some customers led by products, some customers right. led by service, even before the car out, correct? Right. Right. Now, which were led by the products are now become as essential led and right. where we have a dependency on them, correct? Right. Because we have services revenue. So we have a kind of a engagement agreement with that. And okay. YC versa also is applicable because it was led by services. Right. And they are dependent on us. So we right. have a kind of a intercompany agreement on that. So fundamentally, that is a very important for both parties, if you ask me. Right. So right. where these agreements are not novated to them, where we work together as, you know, uh, right. in, in this engagement model to kind of we protect these revenues for both parties. Correct. Correct. Right. Uh, also, uh, like that, that's actually very good to know because that gives you a gives us at least a one steady form of revenue coming in from that's an existing stream that works, right? Uh, I just have two quick questions about uh, what kind of five G services are you planning on offering? Because from uh, like we heard of the Bharti TCS tie up, we heard of Cisco trying to you know get into the hardware with Vodafone. Uh, like so, your would your uh, your services be more on the software end of things, data processing? And the other one was with regard to, uh, I just, this is something that I heard in passing and so I'm not too sure of how it works, but uh, is, uh, I've heard 3i is working with Zscaler or Zscaler, I don't know how they pronounce the name of the company in terms of uh, the exact same thing that you were talking about, right? Security, that's the key essence of what's happening here today. So uh, so they are into, the, into a product-based model where they outsource it to services. So is it something... Are we working just as service model? This thing is there a transfer of technology? Is there something happening there? So, uh, uh, so without getting into the core of the thing, I'll answer all your questions. So, all the three, sure, are, sure. Uh, you know, sure. uh, that, you know. So, in fact, as you speak, we have kind of had definitive agreements with various parties, you know, various stages. Okay, 
Right. One very clearly is uh, we are very closely working with Oracle. Okay. Okay. And, okay. and our alliance is pretty strong because uh, if you look at it, Oracle has been a kind of a, they are in a catch up mode right now in the Oracle uh, cloud space. You know, they are in right. a catch up mode. Right. It suits us because we have also invested in a huge Oracle shop right now from a cloud infrastructure partner perspective. Okay. Right. So now right. we are building around it to your question. I'll come to your 5G and uh, telecom later, but the, the last point when you spoke about, so where we have also developed right. a lot of technologies around the Oracle cloud. Say, for example, we have now built our own VDI. Okay. In fact, I'm sorry. Have... I'm so sorry. Could you just uh, elaborate on VDI? I'm, I'm not yeah, familiar virtual with desktop, simple, uh, Virtual desktop. Now, virtual desktop, like, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, securing your work from home, as simple as that today. So bring my own okay. device. It's a big problem right. for all companies. How do you secure work from home, right? Right, right, right. Now right. It's, if you look at Azure, it's all very expensive. So we are trying to kind of reduce the cost by 50% working with Oracle. You'll see right. our press release in another two or three weeks. We already have you know, definitive agreements okay. on that when releasing it. Okay. So that's a very right. important arrowhead the way we look at it. That's point number one. Okay. Right. Point number right. two is to your point on the uh, uh, example. We are also working on other technologies. Okay. Right. Which right. provide SASE, which is secure access, secure entry, the similar stuff at the edge right. of the device, edge of the network. Right. Right. We are offering that. We are building on top of, you know, white labeled uh, startups who have given us right. exclusive access to technology. Okay. Okay. I give okay. an example of the incubate, right? Right. Right. I'm right. not able to name the technology, but it's a very uh, advanced technology. We got access to those technologies and we are building our own ecosystem and services around it. Okay. Right. right. Now I'll give you an example of this technology. This is 5G grade technology which mm -hmm. I can even offer it at 4G. Okay. So today, right, if right. I want, right. I can offer SASE right. even in our 4G network. Right. So is this something similar to Vodafone Ideas Mimo or something that they recently launched around in September or October? Was that something similar to this? Uh, but, that's a very small version of this. What we're talking is fast, okay. uh, oh, okay. fast secure ones. And right. in fact, we want to talk to Mr. Tucker and other people also, you know, in terms of, you know, offering this. But we have right. quickly wanted to, uh, you know, pilot in some of the other smaller countries like Indonesia or right. Malaysia, wherever, 4G. Right. You know, no, that's, so what it yeah, does that's... also is, this is also edge ready. Okay. See, whatever they are offering is not compatible or upgradable. See, what we are offering, it's right. upgradable to 5G automatically. So tomorrow when right. 5G network comes also, no changes, it's upgradable. Second, right. it's edge ready. When I say edge ready, tomorrow I bring a micro data center also, it's ready automatically. Mm. So things like right. that is what we are kind of looking at it from a future, future compatibility perspective, which will be a right. huge differentiator. This we can offer right. it as a service to people. Right. So good old uh, telecom technology, technology, I go tell them, boss, offer it as a value added service, they'll happily do it. And we can run it right. from the back end. Nobody will know it. Right. It might be a Vodafone service. All you right. know, run by three. That's about it. Right, right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay, so uh, now uh, that's really fascinating to uh, know. But the next next thing is actually uh, what had us a bit concerned. From what I understand is, and I think I would ask uh, Mr. Nezer to come in here because, so what would be the operating profit uh, margin of the newer firm? Because from what I and uh, our understanding was, the meteor part of the business was the products business. You know, like it might have been lower on revenue, but had a higher profit margin. And uh, from our basic understanding, 3i has had cost issues in the past, right? Which has been a cause in the past for why 3i has suffered. Uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Nijar, would you like to like chip in? Yeah, thanks, Adat. Uh, so, what I was uh, trying to point out here is that actually there are two questions. One is that haven't you ended up selling the more valuable part of your business and selling it at just about 2.2 and a half or 2.3 times sales? It's it's not really a, uh, sounds like a very attractive price. Um, even though, of course, the market is extremely happy with whatever has happened and stock is up four times the last one year. Um, the second uh, part is that, you know, you, you mentioned that your EBITDA is just 40 crores on 618 crores of sales, um, which is on the lower side if you look at any. So is this uh, because of legacy issues of, of the way the company has been structured in terms of costing or um, and can we expect some significant change out there? Yeah. 
I will. Uh, so, Mr. Jara, uh, two parts. You know, I inherited the company uh, March 18th. By the time I think the decision to your first question is already done. So, you know, obviously we cannot debate about whether it's right or wrong you know, because, you know, it's already done. But uh, the way I look at it to your point, um, uh, we look at it positively because at least the new 3i, what we have inherited is a debt free company, right? That's the way I look at it. I look at it like a pure entrepreneur. I got a debt free company. It's for me to kind of, you know, build this from here. That's the way I look at it, right? That's right. Uh, from a point number one. Point number two to your question is, you know, you answered it yourself because if you look at it, traditionally 3i has been a product led company. Though right. services was a separate kind of a business unit or, you know, whatever it is, it was a product led company fundamentally. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, I won't call it, uh, it's a, like any product led companies, their ability to leverage the services was not optimal the way I look at it. Right. right, so that's a structural issue. Now, if you look at a company like us right now, where we are, we have no choice. We have to build from where we are. So that's what if your strategy also, Mr. Najar, I said, whatever I have inherited, I call it run. And we are very right. thankful we have that because see, you look at it this way. We are a startup who have inherited the six, not nine crores of business. Right. I don't have to start fresh. So this is putting food on the table for us. All we have to do is run it more efficiently. We extract more margin out of it, right? And right. then we want to invest in the, all the new things I'm talking about in parallel. So these are parallel tracks which are running. So run my current thing more efficiently, get more margin out of it, grow very aggressively in these new lines of business, build for the future. And all these three will converge tomorrow. So if you look at it, our vision also, the medium term is three years, we want to be a thousand crore 100 crore company, simple. That's our mission we are running and we are getting into the cascade right now. We are working backwards to get there. And the revenue mix will change. See, what I'm also telling, in fact, I want to probably, you know, when an investor meet, was this is going to be a new company. Investors are also thinking it's a continuum. No, none of us are in a continuum. It's a reboot. We are rebooting again. This is a new company. It's no continuum. Right, right but given... Um you know your cost structure or whatever you are doing is it's actually a very very competitive field you know we know how many companies in exist across the world on it and they're all trying to do something uh, whether it's cloud or it's yeah, banking yeah, and it's the same words which come across whenever you meet anybody right um it, it's just that some are more successful while executing and some are less so and uh, given your uh, legacy issues of costing, do you uh, how do you sort of um, plan out being ahead of the curve in terms of being able to get the new client or sort of scale up the client, or if you could talk about billing rates or 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 anything which comes to your mind, which helps me understand from a financial angle? Yeah, see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, see, again, you're asking me a question for to a person who is in a continuum. For me, I'm a new guy. Look at it. So you're asking me, I look, my brain already thinks in three boxes. Okay. Right. Box right. number one, what I got, I am ruthlessly focused on making it efficient. Okay. Right. I will get you more percentage on the margins. Right. And I'm not going to do a big PhD about the current business to be very honest. Right. I'm only just going to keep it more better. Grow is very, very get into mining of it. Clear revenue mix change. We're not going to touch any business less than 40% gross margin. Let's be very clear about it as, an, as a simple start point. Nobody's getting even approval for that. So the grow will be, we'll focus 80% on new lines of business we're talking about. Nothing to do with the old lines of business. I'll give you a small example, okay? We are doing testing business or ADMS business, all good old business we've all been doing for 25 years now. Now, none of that we will do in the grow. It is all digital testing. It is all AI power testing. What I do with 100 people, I do with 30 people. You do the math yourself. Same coding, ADMS, my teams are sitting there and doing ADMS for donkey's years, they're all doing. Okay. Right. Today, the same thing I will do with non engineer, no code, low code developers. 50% of the cost. 
IMS teams, I have 1,500 people. I have an infrastructure management services. Okay. Knox, Zoc, right. we all been doing. Every company does that. The new one we are talking about is all AI-led, bot-led stuff. L1 is totally automated. L2 is also half automated. Humans are only L3. So it's human humanoid coexistence. So what I used to do with 1,500, I'll do with 500 people. You do the math. Absolutely. It's cannibalization. See, very simple. World has changed. It is, it's like the old ways. Who, who draws first? And your assessment of the skill set within the firm in terms of reskilling needed in case you're reducing I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time at all. Let's be very clear. That's the run. The best of the lot come to grow. The grow is all lateral hires. We are headhunting from the market very clearly. Right. So you see, don't see any redundancy issues once you're sort of reducing costs across uh, verticals, like you mentioned, the testing. That is where the second problem. See, for example, see, we our new value is going to be, we are going to be a very people-centric company. Okay. Right. And we're going to be kind of, so our new values are around empathy and leadership. The point is that these are separate buckets. We want different skill sets. We will get opportunities for people to move from here. Of course, we will invest in reskilling and upskilling them, right? To help them move into the other boxes. We will do that. But to your point, these are like three separate companies within three. Absolutely. That's the way you want to run it. No, I appreciate your answer. Thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. Thompson, thank you so much. Like that was actually very informative to get that from you. But uh, it gave, brings me to a very interesting point. Uh, there was recently a press release mentioning that your uh, 3i is looking to hire about a thousand people this year, right? And uh, and you've been you've spoken about how you're aggressively chasing growth, for, which is very well appreciated. But uh, what are the company's debt-related plans? Because from my understanding, again, I think there would be there would be a certain amount of capex that would be required to head into certain new business new verticals particularly there might be scenarios where for a first couple of years a new product or new service might not generate as much revenue and uh, yeah and given that the target is a 1 billion dollar uh, revenue by 2030 which is uh, an extremely ambitious target uh, what would be the debt planning that the company is uh, planning is there any sort of uh, I don't know, debt forms that will be raised or would it be internal accruals? How would it work? See, the year one, uh, you know, so that we want to keep it very simple year one. We don't want to complex ourselves. And see, we just got out of this car out. We want to get our basics right. So it's a year of foundational building. We want to be very frugal, right? We just want to kind of test all these parallel tracks very frugally. Maybe four of it will take off and fail fast. 90 days is what I give to people. You start a new one, cut losses, move on. Then we scale. So it's very clear. So for example, we will place these bets in all these we are talking about. Five might succeed, two might fail. It's okay. But then once the five succeeds, they start generating new revenues, we will invest. So year one to your point, uh, point we are going to be very frugal. We are going to be within our means. This year is a year of you know resetting, rebuilding, reinforcing, and getting our things right. Of course, end of this year, we will have to raise capital. Of course, we will. Mm -hmm. We will raise capital. Not here, not this year. This year, we want to be super focused on, you know, it's like a startup, right? We, we want to kind of get our basics right, get our process right, get our fundamentals right. right. So we don't want to run right. before we can walk, actually. Let's be very clear about it, actually. Right. Okay. So uh, you mentioned raising capital. Would this be like, has, is the plan to raise equity or is it through pure debt? Is because uh, I mean we'll get to the the SOA later. I mean that's not something I wanted to talk about first. To be very honest. But, I think you know as this point of time, our life is very small, uh, Siddharth. You know, so though we have, right. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, my focus is right. though we have a long term vision, we have medium term. Right now we are super focused on Q2, Q3. Right. What is approved for certain initial investments from right. our own small means. We want to get right. out the box, actually, to be very honest. Right. Maybe I'd love to answer okay. your question, Q3, Q4, you talk to me, I'll tell you exactly the answers what you're asking me. Okay, I, I'll make sure I'll get back to you then as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, just, yeah, I have one more question before I move on to the SOA part of my questions. Uh, so right now, from and, and I think ever since ICICI existed, uh, exited 
from the company i think around 20, 2012 uh there hasn't particularly been a promoter or a like a control over the the company in that sense and which which one some may argue is a good thing some may argue it's against so yeah, is yeah. there uh, are there like any talks of uh, any group possibly coming in is the management actually in favor of someone stepping in as a promoter group or having a leading stake and i mean how does how do you envisage it going forward i know you just you just spoke about focusing on yeah. q2 q3 but that's something that no, I, 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 maybe again it's a slightly um a q3 question the way i look at it but anyway i'll, I'll, I'll talk about it see ideally yeah. right now the thinking is that we are also kind of you know uh, bringing other more diverse board members to guide the organization so right. right now we are looking at and we are also bringing lot of lateral hires senior folks to join us so right. it is more like a a professionally run organization in fact we want to even uh, you know uh, make a announcement to sebi that formally uh, that we are a a uh, professionally run company we don't have a promoter we are even talking about right. that at, at the point of time so it's very clear to our investors also right that's point number 1 right. right the second one is of course you know see uh, uh-huh. look at it for a healthy company the right promoter can add huge uh or do i say value to it you know right. it again depends on you know the uh, at what point of time at what stage or maybe i think again it's a q3 question the way i look at it right right but right now i think uh, this q2 and q3 we want to stay focused get the base right okay right. so that mm-hmm. at least we will be able to you know accelerate fast because end right. of the day uh, to what uh, what mr gupta asked me ultimately numbers speak right, right. So we get our right. basics right get our exactly. rhythm right right get our right. sales rhythm get our business rhythm right. so right. our focus is more there right now siddharth if you ask me personally right. Right. no to uh, like i mean i completely agree and like my concern kind of stem from the exact same thing that you mentioned that you're going for lateral hires you're getting independent board members which is excellent for the running of the company but it also makes you because all of these require you know shareholder approval yeah, yeah, yeah. etc so i mean in case there isn't a very strong promoter group or it's a very diverse one that leaves you open to a lot of uh, issues with the shareholders or a possible negotiation over who should come in who shouldn't right that's why the a uh, question for my, from my end uh but yeah uh, now i have a few questions which are related to uh, the scheme of arrangement um so the first one was uh, with regard to like first one i'm pretty sure of the answer but i just wanted to get it very clear uh, what would be your outstanding debt or liabilities post this i'm from my understanding you'll be finishing off the soa clearing off the uh, fccbs and then you would be a debt free company is that correct right there will be no liabilities on your books Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mineral is there. Mineral, you want to expand on that question? Yeah. Uh, with this statement, we will be paying off the loans. We will be paying right. off the preference shares also, uh, which okay. is at NPV, and we will also be paying off the FCCB. FCCB payment is now subject to regulatory approval. Right. We have already taken it up with RBI, and the application has gone to through the uh, authorized agent. There will be a small debt in US. Okay. Which is the current account now? Okay. To around roughly two million, which is there, which is an operational debt in US. Okay. It's a working so capital limit, so basically. That's it. No other okay. countries or anywhere across uh, we will have any debt or loan liability. Okay. And so, and from my understanding, the FCCB, you've received permission already. I mean, I think it was part of the NCLT uh, NCLT order that. Uh, you've received approval from singapore as well for clearing of the fccbs right no there is no nclt order here this deal was not done through the nclt route okay this was a direct deal which we did uh, through the shareholder approval route so Achoo. now to repay the nclt because the nclt is being paid before its uh, natural due date we need mm-hmm. to apply to rbi and get it cleared okay So our uh, expense ratios are well under control because RBI doesn't want it to go beyond 4.5 percent, so we don't have that problem. But uh, the authorized dealer says that since there is a change in tenure, it's a change in uh, the original term, so we need to route it through right. RBI. Right, right. Okay, okay. I got that. Uh, the other question was okay. So from my understanding, again, uh, you have roughly about two thousand. 
600 crores of accumulated losses on your books and which is why the soa was bought yes, in the first yes. place yes. and post uh, post the soa you'll ha- still have negative net negative re- uh, reserves of uh, 6 yeah, six the crores. reserves will continue to stay negative right so what's the plan on uh, i mean i know setting it off is there uh, any tax uh, sort of tax planning that's been envisaged for this or no, there are uh, two parts there are two parts i'll break this into two parts one right. is uh, we are uh, the tax planning uh, the tax planning is very well planned in this organization because if you look at the historic losses that i carry forward right. i have sufficient losses which can uh, for which in india i don't need to pay tax for some time okay because right. that is loss as per the income tax calculations okay because I, I, and most of it is in depreciation so that is a carry forward which i can have which i don't have a 8 year restriction at all on that okay and uh, okay. so the, there we are well planned and well positioned over there so even the deal tax impacts uh, on the slum sale get absorbed over here and get knocked off because i can use the depreciation part to knock that right. off Okay. So that's one. Now coming back to the books of accounts, it's right. going to be a journey uh, for me to knock off the negative retained earning. But uh, right. we have a capital reduction scheme which we have announced. So that will uh, set it off by a huge amount. But it right. is still it will still be negative. So we'll have to build up uh, our profits or maybe certain sales which can then uh, get in profits. But it continues to be negative. Okay. Okay, so uh, just just to focus on the first part of your answer, so, uh, when you say you can carry, you'll be carry forwarding your uh, your losses. I'm slightly on the weaker end of the theory here, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if you sh- uh, when you're shifting to the newer tax or mo- tax model, the lower tax model, which was announced in 2019, would you yes. still be able to carry forward these losses? Yes, yes. Please look, look at the if you model? look at the way the finance ministry has. Uh, restricted uh, carry forward over there they have restricted certain items which are basically special depreciation rates and certain benefits which you had under a old section 10 you know those were not yeah. carry forward however our losses we if you look at the history of the company we never had special depreciation nor did we have any claim any benefits which we took under section 10 yes so the carry forward happens and uh, it can it can continue in the normal course whether i or even if I, even if i shift to the new regime or i don't shift because there is no sunset clause in that uh, hmm. okay 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 uh, so my next question uh, obviously it's a very cliched one i'm pretty sure everyone's been asking you but uh, when can we expect the soa process to be completed with because uh, like i mean i know there have been regular updates but there hasn't been any announcement with regard to when roughly the record date for the same would come in and by when would the yeah, entire um, delisting relisting etc go through so see this is a deal which has happened there is a journey which has to be traversed so that is right. going on i can't give you an exact date but our endeavor is to close it as fast as possible right and uh, get away with it but there are certain uh, regulatory matters and other matters which uh, our partners have to sort out so that is underway Right. Uh, could you elaborate on the possible issues that are cropping up in the SOA? No, so the, uh, uh, they have the deal in Thailand and Saudi Arabia yet to close because they are currently getting certain uh, licenses for uh, business licenses to start operating there. So the, as okay. soon as they get the business licenses, the deal can get closed. No, no I think his, his question is the SOA, uh-huh. I guess. No, no. On the SOAs, not SOA. the AIP. Not on the deal. No, sorry, I didn't inter- interpret the SOA. Could you just elaborate? the scheme of you know scheme of arrangement the uh, reduction of capital uh, see that uh, we have got the nclt uh, written orders and now we will put it up in a board meeting and we can close it i mean we should i endeavor is to close it as quickly as possible because it was stuck because we could not get uh, the signed copies and stuff like that certain right. regulatory papers now we have obtained it and we should be in a position to close it quickly right so uh, would it be uh, optimistic for me to assume that in the next uh, by the end of this quarter that we would have like some yeah, at least a record date or actually, something in our internal timelines we want to close it by this quarter right yeah, yeah. right 
so unless by this we have other uh, regulatory issues but we are now staying on course like what right. nirnal said the next step is uh, right. we have to call for a board meeting right. and get it formally approved okay. and then we will uh, go back to the city right okay uh, and so you just uh, i'm sorry if i misheard are there regulatory uh, issues with the soa as well or no, just... no there are no it's, it's a procedural right. matter it's procedural right. okay okay that's uh, that's all from it's all done so that you know it's done we are just now okay. working with the uh, you know uh, what is that uh, i forgot the name what do you call that uh, for icsa securities the other one we are working right uh, harish uh, that is universal trustee sir yeah, yeah yeah we are working with them now to try and see how to you know take okay okay and uh, uh okay so I, that's largely what it is from my end uh, mr sudeep would you do you have any questions to chaiman uh, i think sindar you have covered uh, most of uh, few of my questions already and ninja also covered right, right. I, no, I think uh, for me the most important thing is what is the sort of growth because now it becomes a pure services firm so we start yeah. tracking you on a qoq basis yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> so, you know right. where does that qoq number go and right. uh, of course we quite optimistic that you know the new team and whatever you are trying to do would would be very successful so wish you all the best for that thank you right. thank you thank you thank you okay. so much right. thank you guys and yeah like let, let's let's schedule this for next quarter as well i mean this would this is something really interesting we genuinely enjoyed uh, talking to you and getting your feedback on how the firms looking from the in inside so yeah let's let's do this soon thank sometime you. when the next quarter yeah. Hi, hi, Siddharth. This is Sudhi. 